Gregory von Lebestag here. Guys, what's up? I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to another Kettlebell Podcast. It's number 10, actually. We have been doing 10 podcasts until now. It's so awesome, and thank you so much for joining. We have a lot of ground to cover, guys. But first of all, before we want to get started, I just want to say once again, in a very quiet and clear setting, I want to say thank you that we were able to reach 10,000 subscribers. It's because of you guys. It's because you chose to subscribe to this channel. You chose to like the video, to share it with, maybe with your friends, and maybe even dislike the video because that actually the, the, the YouTube algorithm likes anything, okay? As long as it's engagement, it's good stuff to a certain degree. So thank you very much for sticking with us, for joining with us. Yesterday, we had about approximately 70 people in the chat of our live workouts. It was the first time that we reached 1,000 views of one of our live workouts in the same live workout. So it took us like 50 minutes. Uh, we were streaming for 50 minutes and it gathered over 1,000 views, which is crazy. We have started with very humble numbers with a very, a very, very small beginning. And now it's just crazy. It's incredible where this thing has taken us. And I'm so incredibly grateful, guys, that you are deciding to stick with us. And the kettlebell is such a huge passion for me, for those people who are new, who are new to the channel. Maybe you're watching this for the first time. This is actually what we're doing. We are building our kettlebell legacy, so to speak, on our live workouts, our, on our live podcasts, and the kettlebell content, the videos that we continually upload. And the, the lockdowns, the shutdowns uh, that are currently going on because of COVID is actually giving us the fuel to keep doing that stuff because actually the government forces us to, do, to close down and um, we use that time to further our YouTube channel. So thank you very much for being a part of the ride. Now, guys, so much ground to cover. Now, before we wanna get started, I really wanna let you know, my friends, that you can join the Kettlebell Club. The Kettlebell Club is a small club of our community members, of our YouTube community members who choose to go a step further. If you think the stuff that you're watching is not only worth your time, but it's also worth your money, then you can join the Kettlebell Club. It'll cost you $5.95 
per month you get an awesome small ls logo next to your name whenever you comment something and actually we're now preparing some emojis some <laughs> custom Levishtag emojis and they're gonna look awesome and the kettlebell club will be able to use them in the live workouts on the videos when commenting it's just gonna be awesome now subscribe and like the video if you haven't already because we're so much into kettlebells and if you're now discovering the kettlebell in this day and age it's january a lot of people want to get started a lot of people use the motivation to to ch change their behavior or, or have new workout goals or start something new lose weight do whatever it takes and maybe you're not highly motivated and you just discovered the kettlebell and you think you want to learn some stuff on youtube then you're at the right place my friend like the video and subscribe now these podcasts it's actually me talking okay I, I the last podcast was about two hours i think crazy this amount of time is actually something that i discovered really early in my life that i just love talking i love it, it's if if it is a passion that i discovered that i can talk about it for hours it's actually how i got into the fitness game now if you have any questions you can post it in the live chat i will continually check the chat and see if you have any questions and i will be glad to answer them i will do my best to answer them sometimes even some questions are coming up that i cannot answer maybe some of our community members may answer the question it's not that i know everything it's not that i'm omniscient or omnipotent it's about me being a a guidepost to help you discover the kettlebell and maybe get started with it okay now before we want to get started, because it's January 2021, we want to talk about the power of goal setting. And I'm actually going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to reference a study. We're going to take a look at a study. And then we're going to take a look at how I implemented this study or this system or this approach, this strategy into my life and the results that I got out of it. Now, it's this study is it's kind of tricky because where i found it it's actually discussed and disputed whether these studies actually exist or not but this is just this is this does not this does not add anything to the fact that this stuff may work for you just because it's maybe not an actual study. Maybe it's just, I don't know, a statistic or, or a story or whatever, or it's just some personal story that somebody shared. It doesn't matter. It may work. Now let's check out what this uh, study is all about. The 1979 Harvard MBA study on goal setting analyzed the graduating class to determine how many had set goals and had a plan for their attainment. Now they're talking about graduates. Now we can change the setting into folks who want to lose weight, start a workout plan, start a workout regimen, and get more active, get fit, get healthy, and do whatever it takes to move forward and change their perspective on diet and workouts and training in general. Interesting, interestingly enough, the results of the 1979 Harvard MBA study are exactly identical to the supposed 1953 Yale study. And these are these two studies that people say they actually don't exist. In the Harvard Business School MBA study on goal setting, the graduating class was asked a single question about their goals in life. The question was this. Have you set written goals and created a plan for their attainment? Prior to graduation, it was determined that 84% of the entire class had set no goals at all interesting so 84 percent of the folks who were asked hey you have a goal and you have a strategy said no no goals no strategy i'm gonna see what ha what life hands to me 13 percent of the class had set written goals but had no concrete plans so they wrote the goals down but they didn't have a strategy now three percent of the class had both written goals and concrete plans the results well you've likely seen what guest you, you've likely somewhat guessed it 10 years later the 13 percent of the class that had set written goals but had not created plans were making twice as much money 
as the 84% of the class that had set no goals at all. Now, they're talking about money. We can talk about losing weight, lost weight, or, or, or getting a muscular body or whatever. Put blank in there. However, the apparent kicker is that the 3% of the class that had both written goals and a plan were making 10 times as much as the rest of the 97% of the class. Now, we take this study with a grain of salt because I don't believe it's actually, in my case, it's not as much about having a plan or a strategy to attain a goal because I found out in my reality, in my life, things will change. And things will sometimes, as we learned in 2020, things will sometimes change at a so incredibly fast pace that it takes a lot to catch up. That you got to be very fast to catch up. Now, what I do believe and what, I, what I'm going to show you with my results in the next slide is that having goals, having a clear goal that there's a point where you want to go. And then just outlining a small strategy. It doesn't have to be the strategy from beginning to end because I like this analogy. If you drive a car, those two headlights, they don't shine the way straight home. They just shine the way in front of you so you know where you're going in the present. You don't have to go all out in the future, but just have enough of a plan to say, okay, I want to get started. And what I want to reference right here is I have read a goal on, uh, uh, I have read a study on weight loss, which was very interesting, where people had a study where they asked pr uh, uh, participants to, every time they step on the scale, they have to either record via audio or write down what they are thinking. F researchers wanted to find out what are people thinking as soon as they step on a scale. Now they found out that 93% of the people compare their results to what where they want to go or they compare it with other people and only three percent i think if i'm i'm paraphrasing a little bit but a, a very small percentage actually made a specific action plan to do something about it now isn't that crazy and this goes to show with this study right here that says only a few people have written goals and concrete plans and it even I can add another layer of evidence on this case when you listen to what Jeff Bezos is saying. He says he's shocked at the fact that only a very, very few businesses think long term. Now, when it comes to these studies, I'm taking you on a really private route with this one. You see, these are my goals that you're seeing right here. These are my goals, guys. Now, I have set goals without a date because... I think sometimes putting a date on something can actually push you to reach it or it can be detrimental and, 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 and cause you to lose motivation or drive. Now you see, I have a goal. I want to reach 1 million subs with the YouTube channel. Now the strategy is kettlebell videos because I actually found out these, that's the niche. That's the niche. And sometimes I want to do some nutrition videos, although I found out what works best right now is just kettlebells only. Now I want to, re I want to reach 1 million francs in ad revenue from YouTube. I actually watched a YouTube video from a very successful YouTuber who reached $1.8 million in ad revenue. I want to have another goal. I want to get a rock. I want to get somebody who's very known into our gym and, or do a kettlebell workout with us. Now, how am I going to do this? I have to have a strategy. Maybe when I reach 1 million YouTube subs, some High profile folks will check out the kettlebell, check out our stuff and give it more exposure. I have another goal. I want to help as much people as possible. Blah, 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 blah. And it goes on the list. Now, the second point that I want to I want to point your focus on this one. These are the goals that I have reached. I wanted to reach 100,000 Swiss francs in revenue till the end of 2019. I've reached it in May 2019. I want to reach three and a half thousand subs. That's cute. Until the end of 2019. I've reached it in December 19. I want to have a goal 200,000 revenue per year. I've reached it in December 2019. Now, this is very cute right here. I want to reach 500 subs until the end of the year. And I've reached it in September 2018. And you know what's crazy about it? The hey, Oh, somebody just donated. Thank you so much for the donation. Um, you know what's crazy about it? The crazy thing about it is now we generate almost 500 subscribers a week right now. 
And when I started with the channel, I had a chance to re I, I had I had the goal to reach 500 subs until the end of the year. And now we're making it in one week. You see how things are changing so quickly? And I love this one. This is a personal goal. I wanted to buy a BMW M4 competition all black. And I reached that goal in October 2019. So you see, guys, this is how goal setting can affect your future. This is how goal setting can help you reach anything. And it's not about it's not about setting crazy goals that won't work out. I want to have 1 million subs until the end of next week. That's impossible. That's crazy. And we can put it in the same way now. I want to be a professional when it comes to kettlebell training. I want to have the, the swing, the clean, and the snatch perfected to the level of 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 legendary athletes by the end of the month by the end of the month that's not realistic but what you can do is you can say i want to be better i want to i want to improve to a level where i can say i'm feeling nice i'm feeling great with the swing of the clean or the snatch or whatever until the end of the month i just want to improve step by step one step at a time and if you write that stuff down this is what jim Rohn says if you write that stuff down something magic happens some magical stuff happens if you write stuff down and you use a strategy and you follow that strategy i'm right now listening to the book of stephen king it's 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 uh, it's called about writing I think and uh, what he's saying he's so powerful in the stories that he's telling and the stories that he's sharing and you see that from a young age he discovered his talent and then he made a plan he went after it he didn't shy back from hard work he went after it because he had a clear goal in, goal in mind now let's check out the science of Hollywood uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love this one. Let's check out the science of Hollywood weight gain. <laughs> there should be a scientific study done about this. Man, I'm so hyped, guys. You know, I'm always hyped when I do that stuff because I love it. I'm so grateful that you guys are joining in. And if you're grateful for something, you can't stop. I'm, it's, it's, I think it's contagious. Maybe you guys start screaming as well. If somebody asks you, hey, what's up? Why are you screaming so loud? Then you got to say, I'm just watching that crazy dude from Lady Stark on, on YouTube. Now, the signs of holiday weight gain. Now, I want to focus in on this study of holiday weight gain. Now, the holidays are over, are over and we just had a client. We, we had this conversation just right now before I started this, the stream. And she said, a friend of hers said, well, I at least gained four kilos during the holidays. And I stepped on the scale and it shows. And so many people say this. And maybe you say this as well. Maybe you're telling yourself this story. Man, I actually gained a lot of weight during the holidays. Now, what I always love to do is when you hear a saying or a statement or something that a lot of people say, I actually want to have some proof. I want to put some evidence on it. Now, what I found is a very, very interesting study from Jack A. Janowski et al. And it says, a prospective study of Hollywood weight gain. Now, we, we're not going to read all of this, but I want to read two separate things. Now, the background of the story is the following. It is commonly asserted that the average American or the average people gain five pounds or two and a half kilos or 2.27 kilos or more over the holiday season between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day. And I love this one. Yet few data support the statement. Interesting. And you see, this is another, another insight that you can take away from this. Sometimes people are regurgitating something that they've heard and it becomes socially, the social norm to say this, yet there's no evidence or no data to back it up. Now, what they used the methods is they chose a, a body weight measurement of 195 adults. So 200 people. That's actually, actually a, a very nice range of folks. Now, let's jump down to the conclusions. Check this out. Average holiday weight gain is 0 0.37 kilos. Far less than commonly asserted. So that's, what is this? Is this a pound? Maybe almost a pound? I love this statement. Far less than commonly asserted. 
So if you're right now going crazy and you think, man, I lost, I've gained all this weight, it's probably not as bad as you think it is. And what I always love to say is people are going crazy and start worrying and stressing themselves out for this very short period of a holiday season that lasts about a few weeks and they go crazy about it and they focus on these 14 days. What do I have to eat? No, I, I, don't, I can't eat this. I can't eat that. I have to step back on this. I have to be careful with this. Yet on those 350 days of the year, on those other 350 days, people don't care about it as much. So what I love to say is you rather focus on those 350 days and forget about the 14 days at the end of the year where you just enjoy it and you'll be better off. I love this study. Now let's keep going. Um, we get this question a lot. People ask about kettlebell pricing. How much does a kettlebell cost and what is it worth it? So do I have to, I do believe that you have to invest in some equipment and maybe it is better to invest a little more to have something that will last forever instead of just saving money in the wrong places and then you end up buying another kettlebell or buying a better one instead and then at the end of the day you've probably paid more. We use the same analogy when it comes to personal training. People say personal training is very expensive, yet people go to the gym three or four years, have no results, spend, spend money there instead of just taking that chunk of money, investing it with a good coach who can really help you reach those goals in far less time. Now, there's two things that I want to point out. And I have to say the following. This is our German supplier on the left side. You see MF Shop ATX, your best choice. And these are the so-called original Russian kettlebells. They're from China. Just to be clear, they don't do them. It says German engineering, but they get them from China. All right. So I, I'm not even sure if it is their brand, and I'm not even sure if they designed it. Yet, you know, a, a, a competition kettlebell doesn't take a lot to design it. So you see the prices right here. We're going to check them out right now. So original Russian kettlebell competition, these are the ones, the competition kettlebells which we advise. 28 euros, that's about, what is it, $30 for an 8 kilogram. Then it's 39, so that's like, let's say $42. Then it's 49 euros for 16, 62 euros for 20, and on and on and on. Now I'm saying, what I want to say is we have experience with these kettlebells, and they're awesome. Yet I have to mention, we've gotten some, but we have a very large collection. But we have gotten some who have some broken pieces inside of it so you hear a little bit of clanking going on it may be a little bit confusing yet you know I've worked with all of them and sometimes the clanking you don't even feel it if you go all in and especially when we do these life workouts where we go crazy yesterday we, we went we went we went nuts <laughs> it was so awesome I hope you guys joined if you haven't check out the workout of yesterday now um they they're just cool. I really like them. Do I believe that 28 euros or 30 bucks for an 8 kilo is expensive? No. It's probably even on the more cheaper side. Right? Now let's compare these prices with Kettlebell, King, Kettlebell Kings. They're very well known. Kettlebell Kings, people have asked us actually, we're going to take a look at this question and afterwards, people have asked me about this kettlebell or about the adjustable. Now let's check out what they're charging. They're charging eight ki where is it? Now, eight kilogram. They're charging you 94 dollars. Compare this with the twenty, the thirty dollars. That's three times as much. Now, in their defense, I have to say that they use the hollow kettlebells. The hollow ones are uh, they cast in one solid piece. I think um, 
these are wielded together although i'm not sure i have to like take a look i think they'll cast in one piece as well however these uh kettlebells are have that hollow that hollow weight all right contains no fillers so each weight for the 36 kilograms has an individual mold cast precisely to the correct weight and contains no fillers that's why they're hollow and i've heard from other folks as well that hollow kettlebells feel a little little bit better when it comes to training now i haven't had a lot of experience with uh with a hollow kettlebell to tell you well it, there is a huge difference like i said i'm using those right here but what i from what i can say is a hollow kettlebell worth more yes is it worth 94 bucks three times as much as this one I'm not sure, guys. I, I don't know anybody from Kettlebell Kings. I'm just telling you this from a neutral perspective. We live in Switzerland. We are very neutral. <laughs> this seems like a lot of money. Would I be willing to pay for this? Probably not. If you're a beginner, you could buy with the same money. You could buy a Russian Kettlebell 8, 12, almost three weights yeah almost for the same price for one so like i said they're awesome and maybe because the kettlebells are not stocked right now they're out of stock everywhere that's that's maybe the reason why they're charging so much i am not sure or maybe they're saying hey listen we've built a huge enough name we have a strong brand that's the reason why you pay more just for example, when you buy clothing from Nike, that's probably the reason why you pay more. If we go a little further, and they have the two, two kilo steps, which I think is nice. The 16 is 139, used to be 159. 139 compared to 49 is three times as much, the same almost. All right. So it's, it, it's tricky. It's tricky. I, seriously, guys, I wouldn't pay as much money. If we go even further... These are the Wolversons. Wolverson, uh, Wolverson kettlebells are very, very high in quality. I know somebody who took one uh, when they took a course uh, in the studio. I think it was last year. And if it really feels good. The handle feels good. The weight feels nice. So let's check out what they're charging. They're selling you them in pairs. All right. So it's... Uh, Pairs to me means they selling you these, these two kettlebells. Now, it's very unfortunate that we only can choose the 24 because the rest are out of stock. Because I would have loved to see what they're charging. Now, they charge 174 pounds for two 24s, guys. Two 24s, all right? So, let's, let's see what they're charging right here. Kettlebell Kings charge you 164 for one kettlebell. Now this is, I think it that's over $200. I think 220 or 210 something like this. As a matter of fact, let's check it out. Okay, um, pounds and dollars. So that's how much it's uh, 174, right? So that's $237. Let's put it in euros, um, euro, uh, where is it? Pounds and euro. One uh, seventy-four, so that's almost two hundred euros, right? So it's still the kettlebell kings are very expensive, and if you compare even the Wolfersons with the Russian kettlebells, seventy-five. That's one hundred and fifty euros, almost. Yeah, still about you. You pay fifty bucks more for the Wolferson, which I believe yes could be a reason, or could be there could be some reasoning to say yeah it's worth it. So I'm not here to bash nobody. This is just a clear view on what I would charge for a kettlebell. For if, if we would do them, I would say, okay, an eight kilo would be somewhere between 40 and $55 and from there on. That would be my perspective. So let's take it a step even further. Let's see, we got 18 people in the chat. Guys, that's awesome. Let's check out the live chat. Hey, Angel. <laughs> I love you, baby. I love you, baby. Angel just donated one buck. I love you, baby. <laughs> Let's check out the comments. I'm going to check out what's going on. Let's switch back because if we have any questions, we're going to dive in right now. 
and check out if there are any questions right now. Ricardo saying hello. Liberalism saying yeet. And uh, Roll Treble says semi lockdown, Norway for 14 days. Uh, that's crazy. Long Toe saying hi, Kettlebell Club. Pat Filipovsky says, loving the content. Total noob here and learning a lot from you guys. Thank you so much for joining. It's awesome that we can teach you a lot of stuff and that we can bring you some value. Angie saying hello to the crew. Uh, amazing work yesterday with the 24 kilo long toe. Yes, Angie yesterday was rocking with a 24 kilo. Angie is a beast, guys. Thank you so much, Matthew. Which kettlebell did you use to the training? Oh, I'm wondering as well, long toe. What kind of weight did you choose? Uh, Dean saying, hey, what's up, gang? Alexia also rocking. And uh, long toe was rocking the 24 and the 28 kilo. Awesome stuff. Now, let's check. Uh, Pat Filipowski says, for a beginner, how and when to transition from the grinding lifts to the ballistic lifts? Progression? Sorry if you already have a video on this. That's no problem. We have a lot of videos on a lot of tough stuff that I'm talking about. I'm actually going to do another video on that stuff that I'm talking about right now. So don't worry about it. Now, when to transition from grinding lifts to base ballistic lifts? I would say transitioning... As soon as you feel safe and you've built a solid foundation, some structural integrity, as uh, um, as uh, Elliot Hulse would put it, which I I, I like that I like that uh, uh, statement. Structural integrity means that you feel safe, you feel strong, you have built a solid foundation, and you have uh, you have improved your neuromuscular function. You know how to trigger the muscles, the mechanisms, the the joints, and all that kind of stuff. And then when you transition to the ballistics, we we will talk about it in a in a second. Talk to a good coach if it is possible, if it is possible, because you want to learn the ballistics as perfectly as possible because then you won't do any reprogram you won't have to do any reprogramming learning from a pro from the get-go because doing a deadlift is not as complex as doing a kettlebell swing okay so as soon as you feel ready as soon as you feel safe listen to your body then you can start transitioning uh fernando g hello lockdown in uk now i purchased an extra kettlebell online today great decision fernando Nice to see you all again, Angie's, Angie's saying. You see, Dean and Alexia and Rolf, these folks have joined the Kettlebell Club. And that's why, you know, we have this awesome community vibe going. We really love it. Fernando G, yep, the third one. Yeah, it's crazy. UK, you guys are really, it's crazy. It's crazy. We have to see what Switzerland is deciding soon. Rolf Trebo, 16 kilo and 20 kilo for me on yesterday's training. Looking uh, on a 24 and a 28 kilo. Upgrind, uh, upgrind. Upgrade that stuff, Rolf. Let's do it. From 12 to 24 kilo, usually 16. Lighter ones when I'm very tired or the workout is long and heavier ones for deadlifts. Good stuff. You see, you can always, when you do a kettlebell workout, you can also switch intra-workout in between the exercises. For example, like Alexia is pointing out, you're choosing a heavier weight for a deadlift, you choose a lighter weight for a clean over press. Baby, thank you so much for uh, donating to the, to the channel. <laughs> I love you, baby. Great, Rolf and Alexia, so strong, guys. King, <laughs> she just tried something. I'm going to give you the money back, baby, if you tried something out. Um, Dean saying, yeah, I got one uh, that has some steel loose inside. The weight shifts slightly when you snatch overhead. Well, that's a problem. That's a problem, actually. Um, like, I, I've experienced snatching with R24, which is broken a little bit inside. However, I don't feel any shifts. Maybe that's because I'm such a beast. <laughs> Just joking. But uh, if you if you really feel the difference, and if anybody out there who's now watching or tuned in, if you have any experience on the kettlebell king's kettlebell, and uh, you can justify the reason why they're so pricey, please let us know in the comments. Uh, here we go. Long to saying, I love my kettlebell king's pants. They ship in USA for free. You can also get discounts by leaving items in your cart. And they almost always send you a 10% off coupon. Have to play the game. That's awesome. If they have a lot of, if they had great customer service, that also can, uh, uh, can be represented on the cost for each kettlebell. Alexia, at the beginning of the lockdown, we saw people buying kettlebells and dumbbells from Amazon and Decathlon and selling them at very expensive prices. We even saw a 16 kilogram Wolverson one for 200 pounds. Well, that's uh, scalpers. Scalpers are, uh, that, that happened to the PlayStation 5 as well. Scal scalpers are out choosing, I heard this story, they're choosing bots that place thousands of orders in seconds and then they sell them for a very high price 
to make a profit out of off of it. Um, pricing has been Joe saying pricing has been ridiculous since shutdown started, and. 100%. Listen, guys, if if you have to pay a little extra because the item is out of stock and the demand is high, this is basic economics, then of course I have to pay a little extra and I'm willing to pay extra. However, if the extra goes nuts, then it's just to make a quick buck and, and stuff like this should not be tolerated or supported. Now, Dean's saying, good tip, long toe. I sanded a couple of handles for some grip and the rust has crept in a little. Yeah, that's always when, when you know, I have to say with the, with the original kettlebells, we don't have no rust, no nothing. Well, actually just on the bell itself, but on the bell itself, it doesn't matter as long as the handle stays fine. And then uh, we have uh, Alexia. We are we were lucky and managed to get high quality equipment from gyms that were closing down. Awesome. Great decision, Alexia. Uh, Adita, uh, Aditya Kamat, you deserve 10 million subs. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Pat, uh, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> Angel saying, night of a Magi Gato. Okay, okay, that's cool, baby. Uh, Rolf Trebo, 144 euros for 28 kilo in Norway. Sportmaster Numb is my shop. 144 euros for 28 kilo. Let's check out if we can see. Ooh, that's, that's expensive. That's expensive, Rolf. If it is a Wolferson or a hollow one, it could justify the price, but... Yeah, it's crazy. I think I think Mega Fitness is doing a great job with not artificially pushing up their prices. Uh, you use original Russian kettlebells. How good is the quality of these? Do you recommend these bells? I actually love them, Tony. And there's the question that people are asking is, if you listen to an athlete, they will tell you you have to get some Ural. I think they're called Ural kettlebells or just some hand. I, I, I talked to an athlete or I talked to a coach once and he said, um, he's gonna pay. He's willing to pay about 200 f Swiss francs for a 16 kilo, done by a very well-known sports club in Germany, because they are engineering a kettlebell that feels just like magic. Now I'm gonna have to tell you guys, if your technique is safe, that's my opinion. You don't need that extra stuff. I believe. If you are an athlete and you're working for time and you want to get the master of sport and you're intensively preparing for, for a competition, then you want to make sure that you have a very nice kettlebell who doesn't shift inside and the weight stays the same all day, every day. Yes, in that case, it probably matters. And it matters if you're going for high reps. It matters if you're going for competition sets and you want to go all in and you're competing with other people in a championship. However, for the rest of us, I think a, a basic standard price is, is, is good. I think what uh, uh, Mega Fitness is charging is probably a little bit, is not as much. I would charge a little more, like I said. However, getting into those pricey ranges, I think it's not justifiable for folks who are beginners or for folks who want to work out. And that's Taking a look at the big picture, that's 80% or maybe 90% of the population. Beginners of folks like me and Angie who want to work out. Or we're coaches. We're prob probably we're in the professional range because we're coaches. But most people just want to work out. And then I don't think it's worth to pay as much money for one kettlebell if you can get two kettlebells or even a heavier one and then, you know, use some progress, do some progressive training. All right. So that's the topic of uh, pricing kettlebells. Now we're going to take a look at how you can start as a beginner switching back to our topic. 24 people in the chat. So awesome, guys. Thank you so much for joining. Don't forget, let us know where are you from? Where are you from? Type it in the chat. Type it in the comments. And we want to send you some love because now lockdowns, shutdowns are happening. We got to send us some love, guys. We got to send us some real, real love. Now, before, before we want to go into how to start a, as a beginner, I want to have a word from our sponsors. Stravo, my name is of no importance to you. Just know this. I sponsored today's video of Libestan. In the back, you see my friend Igor. We are both hunting for good kettlebell channels. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Lebestark YouTube channel. Or else, comrade, we can't consider you to be a true student 
of the art of kettlebell training. So you heard what he said, like and subscribe to the channel. Guys, let's keep going. How to start as a beginner. These 10 points, I'm going to do a in-depth video on these 10 points because I came up with these 10 points recently and they are worth a very high quality video. You can anticipate it, but we wanna glance over them and see how we can really help you with these 10 points and talking about them briefly. And maybe you wanna share, guys, especially you who now have gained some experience, let us know how you started and what your tips are for beginners because we need multiple perspectives. That's why I love, that's what I love about this channel, guys, is it's not only me, it's not only Angie, it's not only Lebe Stock, it's about you guys helping each other out and maybe you have some inputs and some, chip, some tips from a different perspective that I'm not seeing and that is worth exploring. So please type it in the chat if you have any tips on how to proceed as a beginner. Now, number one, uh, like I already mentioned, is invest in a good kettlebell coach. If you have the means and you have some financial situation where you're able to invest in some training, do it. If you find an awesome coach near you, visit them, pay them a visit, especially in today's day and age. Pay them a visit, let them know that you wanna learn good technique. How can you find a good kettlebell coach? I will start with the IKFF directory. That's one thing that we can look at. So that's one stop that I would look, all right? So that's the IKFF, that's where we got our certification and you here see, find an instructor, an instructor worldwide. Now we have, we're in here as well. You see Angie's here, I'm here, because we were certified level one, level two by Steve Carter uh, in the June, in June 2019. So the IKFF just is such a good starting point because what Steve taught me, it's, I'm saying this for the umpteenth time. It was a pivotal moment of my career as a coach and as a trainee. So here you may start. Now, is it worth to visit a coach in person? It is 100%. Right now it's maybe tricky. So you can maybe do some online classes. However, I would really advise you, once you're able, visit the coach in person, because in-person coaching, while I believe in the power of online coaching, I believe in the power of that online stuff, I still believe that there's nothing that can compare to one-to-one -to -one coaching. One-on-one -on -one coaching is the highest form of learning. That's my opinion. Another place where you can look is right here. Hey, look at these folks. Look at these folks. <laughs> if we are the ones who may help you go along and move a little further, we are more than willing to do it. So invest in a good coach. And number two, and this is what you saw. Um, what was his name? Got to check his name again. Uh, Pat Filipowski. He said something which I can tell that he's watching our stuff because he mentioned these two categories. You have to differentiate between exercise categories. That's what Philip uh, Pat just did. What does that mean? You have two categories. The first category is the grinding lifts. The grinding lifts are the deadlift, a goblet squat, a press, a lunge, Turkish get up, or a windmill, or a row. So these, I think it's seven exercises that we are qualifying 
as grinding lifts and you can do multiple variations out of those exercises i mean if we could go if we could, if we would start about talking about the exercise selection you would go crazy there's so much stuff yet i believe in a simple and sinister protocol that um uh, pavel Tatsulin laid out however i don't know it exactly how he lays it out what i believe is in the simple stuff so the grinding lifts is one category these are easier to master yet they really really are able to push you what you can do if you want to find out how they feel and what they look like in action check our uh, yesterday's workout i think it's yeah it's kettlebell workout number 81. check these are just grinding lifts only and while they are easier to master doesn't mean that you won't get a good workout in or in or that they won't push you to your limits now the second category is the ballistics ballistics are swing clean and jerk maybe and a snatch ballistics mean you have a ballistic element involved in the execution of the exercise that leads to completely different triggerings of triggering of your muscles of your neuromuscular adaption because ballistics are very unpredictable and harder to control and if you make a mistake if you just take a look at a swing you'll probably see one motion you see this pendulum motion if you take a look at the swing for example however if you break down the swing we believe it's actually five phases and if you go through these five phases you actually find out okay if i'm making a mistake where i'm where am i making a mistake hint most beginners Beginners make the mistake at phase four. So understanding the ballistics means, and that's why Pat asked the question. It's awesome. He asked the question because he said, "Hey, when can I transition transition from the easier ones to the heavier ones, or the just the the those the ballistics are just harder to master?" All right. So when can I transition? Point number three is start with the easy lifts first. So my advice to you would be start with the grinding lifts first. Because even though the, the, the ballistics are the most fun, and even though the kettlebell is made for those exercises, even though it's just, uh, uh, um, I, I digress a little bit, we got this one comment that says, the kettlebell wasn't designed for, the kettlebell wasn't designed for ballistic exercises. And that's true. It was designed to be a scale weight, 100%. I, I had to heart that comment. It's an awesome comment. It's 100% true, yet, the makings, we have to, so we have to put it in a different statement. The makings of the kettlebell qualify it to be very, very useful for ballistic exercises. Let's, let's put it like this. So start with the grinding lifts first. Now, number four, choose the right weight. We always say the same. Females who never touched the kettlebell before start with an eight kilogram. Males who never touched the kettlebell before start with a 12 kilogram. And from there, working yourself up. Choosing the right size means you choose a competition kettlebell. These are all the same sizes, yet different weights. Don't go for these kettlebells. Don't, don't go for these kettlebells who, who change in sizes because the technique that you will master with one size will change once you use a different size. Invest in a good kettlebell. Although we now just talked about it. Now the question remains to be answered: what is a where is the, the 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 limit for the pricing for a good kettlebell? Number seven is you will do some neuromuscular gymnastics when you start kettlebell training. We will go into this point in depth, but what it in a in a future video. But what it means is you have to trigger different muscle groups at the same time to do different things crazy stuff for example if you're in the rack rest position you have to trigger your quads glutes and hams to rack the kettlebell so you can really stay stable imagine that when you rack and rest the kettlebell in the rack rest position your legs are like a trunk firmly planted on the ground resting with your upper body only so your upper body your back is relaxing you're getting loose. Even your arm is relaxing when you're in the rack rest position. I always imagine myself that my shoulder comes out of its socket. But your lower body has to be tense. Once you're up in the overhead top fixation, your upper body, or to be more specifically, your arm will stay tense. You have to lose a lot of power from your arm, triceps, and lats to stabilize the kettlebell. At the same time, your legs can relax. 
That's your muscular gymnastics. Number eight, be patient. Be patient. Uh, I've recently heard this in a, in, yeah, in a scientific study. They said that the Olympic lifts, Olympic weightlifting is very tricky to master with the barbell. I 100% agree. Take a look at what Klockoff is doing. This dude is crazy. Take a look at what this dude is doing. He's snatching weight that I can't even deadlift. <laughs> so learning the Olympic lifts, snatches, cleans, jerks, clean and press, clean and jerk with a barbell is probably the highest form of technique when it comes to training in general. That's why you see so many fails in CrossFit because it's such, these exercises demand so much knowledge, repetition, to, to be perfect and safe with good form and an awesome execution that if you put these awesome exercises do a lot for your body in a setting where you have sometimes, not all of them of course, they're awesome CrossFit coaches I believe, but you put them in a setting where you have sometimes very unqualified coaches teaching you an exercise that is high in demand when it comes to learning adaptability and all that stuff, it takes a lot to learn, it takes a lot to master, then you have these fails coming up. So they're saying these, that's, that's top notch. I would say when it comes to the kettlebell, especially the Russian style is also top notch. Probably not at the same level with the barbell. I would, yeah, I would, I would sign that. I would say yes, the barbell is highest form. Yet, doing the Russian style, clean and jerk, I'm telling you, especially the snatch with the kettlebell. The snatch in the Russian style and the good voice sports style with a kettlebell is probably the highest form of the kettlebell in kettlebell training in general because it is so nuanced so what that means is patience is the key it takes a lot of time to master those lifts number nine is a proper warm-up and mobility routine we we're going to do a video about it as well we go uh we follow the philosophy of functional movement systems i did an online course in 2018 or 2019, I think it was. And I got this one state. That, 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 there's some stuff that they're doing that I don't believe in, that I don't think is necessary. However, there's one statement, and it's their philosophy, that I do share. And I modified a little bit. They say, move well, then move often. And they even clarified it with how the, the statement is formed. Move well, dot, there's a point. And then move often, there's no point because you keep moving. But moving well has a certain stop to it. So what this means is you have to move well with your body itself. That's why I modified it. Move, move well with your body without any load, with your body weight only, before moving often on the load. Because if your body is not moving well in itself, it will be very dangerous with load. That's why... Proper warm-up and a good mobility routine is key to loosen certain muscle groups up because most of us, guys, let me tell you, most of us are tied up and are tight in our hips and our shoulders. And we need maybe some mobility, some routines to loosen that stuff up, to, let, to, to, to loosen those muscles who have been tight for ages and then using some weight or using the kettlebell to strengthen those muscles who have been weak for ages. Now, I'm not saying that a warm-up or a mobility routine will cure any pain or any problem that you have with any of your joints or arthritis or whatever it's happening. It may be improving. I'm not saying that it's going to be perfect afterwards. And there's even, if you want to take a step even further, there are some exercises that some people are not qualified to do with perfect form. I can give an example. We have one client. He had a surgery on his hip. I think it was the left side of his hip, so his left femur. I think they pulled it out of the hip socket, and then they had to, I don't know what they had to do with the joint, and uh, I think they had to, ah, can't find a word in English, just, <laughs> okay, <laughs> inside the joint, and then they put the femur back in because I, he was hurting. I, I don't know what it was in English. So 
now because of that situation his range of motion is limited and it's even visible when you compare those two legs when he does it with the right leg for example when he does the squat his right leg is able to go way further out than his left leg so his left leg is impaired with the range of motion there's no mobility routine that will improve this because it is structurally given so maybe some structures don't allow for certain movements of certain range of motions and that's totally fine now, workout and duration and frequency is something that we will extrapolate upon in detail on this upcoming video. What I want to say is if you're just starting out and you're thinking about how long is the workout supposed to take, you can really cut, if you, let's put it like this, if you have been working out in the gym for an hour or an hour and a half, you can cut that. You can cut that 70% of the time. You will use only 30% of the time that you're used to in the gym. I guarantee you, especially if you use our training method, okay? So if you've been working out and now you're choosing the kettlebell, maybe you're upping, you're, you're opting in for 20 minutes and that'll be tough. If you are just starting out, it's your first time, then maybe, especially when it comes to exercises where, that have the grinding list involved, maybe you start with 10 minutes. Maybe you just start with five minutes. Maybe start easy. If you have never lifted any weights before, you're maybe overweight and you have some problems, some underlying conditions or some conditions that are known to you already, maybe start with five minutes. Or what you can do is you tune into our live workouts. You use what we do as an inspiration and you do what you can do. This is very and very important disclaimer and a very important message that I want to put, uh, put across right now. If you see what we do in our live workouts, don't feel bad or don't lose motivation or inspiration because you're not able to follow along as much or as intense or with the same weight like Angie and me. I don't want to say that we're perfect or that we're the best athletes ever or that we're beasts. Although we kind of are a little bit. We're, we are, we are. Yeah, Angie especially is a beast. <laughs> what I want to say is you you're starting your journey somewhere else at another place we were there as well we started at this place as well in my case it's 11 years ago i've been working out for almost a decade now started my intense kettlebell journey now for one and a half years straight now you're starting in a different place which is totally fine so use it as inspiration and stop drop the kettlebell rest breathe have some fun with us type something in the chat and then go back at it again now, we want to go into YouTube comments and uh, some questions. Now, before we want to dive in, I want to see if you guys have anything to say in uh, the chat. Uh, let's see what happened to the chat, if we have some questions, because then we have some comments that I want to extrapolate upon, some questions that we got on YouTube, which I think are very interesting to answer. And then I think we will probably wrap this up sooner or later. I've been streaming now for over an hour, and uh, yeah, I just can't stop talking. <laughs> now, let's see. Um, Dean is saying, um, I even got a 28 kilo kettlebell that arrived with a shiny chrome handle. I emailed the supplier and they said they're changing due to popular demand. Has anyone encountered this? Ooh, wow. What, they're changing the handles due to popular demand? Hmm. And how was that shiny chrome handle? It probably, it's probably the cheaper version or how, how does it feel, Dean? How did it feel? Hi, I purchased a 16 kilo competition kettlebell for 85 bucks by eBay. That sounds that sounds uh, very reasonable, Mike 77. So I hope you're having fun with that kettlebell. Um, Pat is smiling. <laughs> Maybe I said something that made made you made you smile. Joby, California got some 12k kettlebells from my f uh, friend and found your channel. What California got? some 12k kettlebells from my friend and found your channel well that's awesome if somebody found a channel but don't understand the statement or the, the sentence perfectly what 12,000 kettlebells or what <laughs> i'm sorry if i don't understand what you were saying robinson 157 francs for taurus 32 kettlebell taurus oh taurus oh let's see let's see guys let's see taurus i know the, i know the brand i know the brand uh, and I know who sells them. Uh, Sport team. Wait a second. 
GG. Yeah. Wait a second, guys. Taurus kettlebell. Let's see. Give me a second, guys. Kettlebell. Taurus. Competition. Let's check. So, you're saying, you're saying, wait a second. Uh, 32 kilo. Yep. I actually, I don't know the brand. But it's a it's a reasonable price. If I compare it with Mega Fitness, let me switch and see what the original Russian kettlebells with the 32. I think that's actually a fair price. The 32 original is 99 euros. Yeah, it's actually it's a reasonable price. It's a reasonable price, but I don't know the quality of the Taurus kettlebells. So, uh, I wish I've started uh, on start-stop exercises. Uh, what does it mean, Rolf? Can you extrapolate upon this? Uh, long toe, started off. Ah, that's the tips. Man, I'm going so ahead of myself. So, uh, yeah, that's awesome. Can you extrapolate a little bit upon it, Rolf? Uh, long toe, started off hard style with Pavel's book. I honestly think hard style is easier to learn. I do agree. I started learning sport from your videos and then expanded from there. The basic grinding lifts are best. That's awesome. Yes. And you see how we differ in opinions? Um, I believe the ballistics, I love the ballistics. I'm so in love with the ballistic exercises. And here we have Long Toe, one of our, he's the kettlebell club leader, so you guys know it. And he loves the grinding lifts best. So you see, it, it's all good. And we always talk about it, and even, even did a video about it, when we, half the question about heart style and sports style we are biased we come from the sports style i've learned it from steve carter i think it's the best style ever however if you choose heart style and you're satisfied you're 100 at the same spot where i am and that's totally fine emma breita hello bro i'm from milan italy hey emma du warst bei uns im stream yes awesome i didn't know mega fitness uh could it be a good alternative to decathlon what's your take on this by the way great podcast thank you very much emma well the decathlon kettlebells let's check out what they're what they're charging i've heard about the decathlons i think it's a german brand right it's a german brand and i'm not even sure if they have if they have um kettle the competitions Kettlebell, kettlebell, competition kettlebell. Let's see what they're charging. Oh no, oh no. Check this out, guys. Check this out. See, that's that's why I love doing these, these podcasts. Let's check this out. Stravo, my name is of no importance to you. Just know this. I sponsored today's video of Liebestark. In the back, you see my friend Igor. We are both hunting for good kettlebell channels. Make sure you like and subscribe to the Lebestark YouTube channel. Or else, comrade, we can't consider you to be a true student of the art of kettlebell training. <laughs> you heard him. He just, uh, I didn't even know that he wanted to do a, a shout out right now. Normally, I, I announce him, but he, yeah. He, he decided to go for himself. So guys, if this is your first time here, like and subscribe to the channel. We're all about kettlebells and we love helping you out. Now guys, check this out, check this out. And these decathlon kettlebells, that's, so I, I don't use this word often, but that's crap. That's crap, guys. Now, if you don't have any other option, it is a good option. But these kettlebells, those are not competition kettlebells. They have, they have a completely different handle. The window is different. The, the, I don't know what this is on the bottom. That's maybe the design. But it's not worth it. Uh, uh, hence, they are very, very cheap. Kettlebells like this are not worth it, guys. So competitions... Decathlon doesn't have competition kettlebells. We always advise to buy ke competition kettlebells because that's the best way to go. Um, same size, yet you can choose different weights. So if you have already got one, so I'm seeing that's Domios. That's the brand. I'm sorry. It's not the Decathlon brand. They're just selling it. Domios is the brand that they're selling. That's great to see. And... Um, no, that, that's not worth it. You can see how it all changes. You see, and, even, and that stuff as well, guys, that's unnecessary. You don't, don't go below 8 kilograms. 
Don't use a four kilogram kettlebell. Don't go below eight. Because if you choose, we had one client, she was, uh, she was coming in with a four kilogram kettlebell. If you choose this light weight, you'll never use your legs for any overhead movements. And you won't even use your legs for, for movement. You, a deadlift, you won't even feel it. You won't even feel that weight. If you want to go very light, then you choose a five kilogram dumbbell where you can do presses, curls and cleans and maybe a, a dumbbell goblet squat but this is this is not worth it because a dumbbell is not made for the ballistics and a swing with a four kilo won't won't probably do you anything now at, at the same time if that's the only weight that you have um well at least you can work out that's 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 a good thing but if you're choosing and if you're thinking about buying and you know, see what we have uh it's the wolferson that i could really recommend um, now we have Longto, one of our kettlebell club. He's the kettlebell club leader. He recommends that they have awesome customer service. That's probably the reason why they charge a little bit more, although I'd say it's probably a little bit too much. The Taurus, I don't know the bell. I don't know how they how they like. When I look at them, well, they, they're probably good. What I don't like is those those uh, those bright colors. I don't like that. Uh, I, I do like the mega fitness ones just to show them again. And uh, just to let you know, guys, this video is not sponsored by any of these brands. It's just we have we have to talk about it because these are the brands that that people are going with. Now, I love that's I actually love the design. It's black and just have those has those small color codes on it. All right. So let's keep going. Um, where we at? Where we at? Ooh, 26 people in the chat, guys. You're rocking. You're rocking. Um, so. Uh, Ryan says, uh, so my take on this, to answer your question, Emma, don't choose uh, uh, kettlebells from Decathlon. Ryan Pierman, Pierman, hey, I've been training kettlebells for a few months now. I use a 16 kilo and 24 kilo, but my crazy partner went and bought me a 32 and a 40. My question being, what can I do with them? Don't want to go to waste. And Jakub just answered your question in a very straight and cool manner. Do... He says death lifts, <laughs> death lifts, do deadlifts. With very heavy weight, you can always opt in for really cool, for a re really cool exercise, which is the deadlift. And once you advance with your technique, you can actually maybe try goblet squats. Uh, I, I used the 32 kilogram yesterday for a power clean and press for a deadlift. First use the 28 and then use the 32. So deadlifts, power clean and press, and then walking lunges. It's heavy stuff, and at the same time, there's another interesting aspect that I saw from a very old school strongman, where I'm gonna show you, uh, I have to show you this, guys. I'm gonna have to show you this, guys. Um, no, I can't show you, because I can't remember his name, and searching would waste too much time. Now, what he said is, he had a record of lifting, doing a quarter squat, a quarter squat, I think a half squat, with 900 kilos or something. And then somebody asked them in the comments and said, what is, what is the reason for doing a partial squat or just a, 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 a half squat or a quarter squat with 900 kilograms on your back? And he said, that's old school strongman style, sometimes using incredibly heavy weight and just racking that stuff on your shoulder puts a lot of stress on your neuromuscular system, on your, on your uh, neurological system, on your bones, on your structure, and that's a workout in itself. And that's something that we chose. I was inspired by this statement. So yesterday in yesterday's workout, when we finished the lunges, we actually had that heavy kettlebell up on the rack position and we just stay there for a few seconds and it's taxing on your system having heavy weight on your body as long as you can rack it perfectly and safely and you don't hurt yourself it is taxing for your system just racking it uh kaka cacao nuts says uh thank you gregory making 2021 the year of the kettlebell for me you're welcome brother thank you uh, Joe B, what is the best video on your site for a beginner? I think uh, if you just uh, if you subscribe to the channel and you visit our channel, it's the one that says three exercises. I think top three exercises for beginners and workout duration. That's one of the best videos that we have for beginners out right now. 
but uh, we have uh, a swing video as well and we will do some some uh, future stuff in this month we actually I have a lot of content prepared for you guys for beginners to help you out to find your way uh, I think the key, Alexia saying, is knowing our own abilities and skills before starting any training and start building up from that. That's awesome, Alexia. And at the same time, we see it with clients. We have a lot of people who don't know their abilities, who don't know their, uh, their skills before starting anything. They are so, their self-esteem is so drowned to the bottom from the outside world that they don't trust themselves with anything in the real world and when it comes to training or lifting they don't trust themselves with nothing that's why they visit us and we help them build up some self-esteem that they can actually discover their abilities their skills and a lot of people don't don't know that and it takes time to discover this and it takes a good coach to discover this um alexa saying uh pat saying really great info thanks for all the answers you're welcome brother alexa saying decathlon is a french company and the kettlebells are not very good so you see, mm. uh, Alexia, I have two eight kilogram kettlebells and they're awesome for beginner, but not if you want to do proper training. Yeah, and that's another thing as well. If you are a beginner and you don't have the finances yet to invest, yet you want to start, then maybe, yeah, it's an option. You see, and I love the statement or that phrase that says, it depends. However, investing into a good kettlebell, saving a little bit more money, and then being happy with one that will work forever is probably maybe a more viable option. Rolf saying, in the beginning, I wish I spent more time on start, stop swings and similar exercises for better technique. That's awesome, Rolf. That's a very good input. It's not about just always keep working and going. Maybe it's just like probably what you're saying, Rolf. It's just um, putting... Uh, extrapolating the different phases from the exercise stopping learning listening to your body see how it feels and then go at it again uh dean says uh, shiny handles fine for swings and deadlifts but if i ever get the snatching at 28 i would be worried it flew out my hands as i doubt the chalk would stick ah yeah that's maybe it and uh yeah a very good recommendation would be to put chalk on your hands as well as on the kettlebell. Put chalk on the handle and put chalk on your hands and then uh, the snatch, it will probably stick better. Now, at Tony saying, if you want cast iron bells, not competition style, look on eBay. There are some in the UK making them at a good price. And that's, that's also a good example if you're looking for those cast iron bells. However, we always say it's probably the best option to opt in for competitions. Same size, yet different weights. Uh, Kakano said, Gregory, uh, I'm going to be getting into kettlebell training with my girlfriend who is relatively much less experienced and strength trainer than I am. I'm already quite strong from classic powerlifting lifts. You go, brother. Awesome. Um, how do you recommend uh, a structure of training session so that they're challenging for both of us? If you have separate weight, you probably choose separate weights, right? And a good, a good place to start would be check out our yesterday's live workouts or follow our, our live routines. Because the way we work out is we always choose three exercises for two minutes straight, going through the exercises unbroken with as little rest as possible. So that's six minutes of work. And then we do one minute break and then we do three to four rounds. Now, what you can do is you can opt in for a heavy kettlebell, go heavy and start working. And your girlfriend can do the same exercises and choose for a lighter one instead. If you are using a more advanced lift, like probably a jerk or a clean or whatever, your girlfriend can opt in and say, okay, I'm going to use a, sim a, a similar exercises that is easier to do. And if you have a little bit of experience, and if, like you said, in powerlifting, or you have experience in powerlifting, maybe you can tell her, hey, just go with, with an easier alternative version. But that's how you can work together. And it's not about, hey, I'm, I'm going to do... Uh, 15 reps, you do 20 reps, I do 8, you do 5. We always believe in working with the kettlebell in a simple program, and that's the four-time method. So make sure you join us at a live workout, or maybe check out our recent yesterday's live workout on demand. I hope this answers your question, brother. Uh, Ryan Perman, power cleans, rack lunges, and deadlifts. Got it. Yeah, try this. Try our yesterday's workout. It was a beast of a workout. And there you will see these exercises. Now, I'm going to jump in uh, into some comments. And then we're going to end this one. You guys are so active in the chat. That's so awesome. 
So let's check out the uh, what we have to say. Um, this is a huge. It's of no importance one. to you. Right. Just know this. I sponsored today's oh, video so of Libestan. In the back, you see back my friend in. Igor. <laughs> we are both hunting for good kettlebell channels. Make sure Igor. you like and subscribe to the Libestark YouTube channel. Or else, comrade, we can't consider you to be a true student of the art of kettlebell training. Now he jumps back in. He jumps back in. He just wants you guys to like and subscribe to the video. Now, um... This is just something, it's a huge text, I'm going to read it to you, but it's interesting about an experience from somebody who commented on one of our videos who owns a Onnit kettlebell. Maybe some of you are familiar with the Onnit kettlebell, with the protruding design, with the face, with the, with the chimpanzees, with the monkeys, with Darth Vader and Boba Fett. They look awesome. I believe it's great for a piece of art. And he says something that really adds to the fact how it could benefit you, a Onnit kettlebell. And that's his experience. He says, I own a Gorilla kettlebell, those, those Onnit kettlebells. Personally, it's actually okay. And to be honest, it feels pretty good to use it as seeing its Gorilla face motivates me more on training harder as a Gorilla can represent. That's awesome. I didn't think about that uh, insight. If you have a kettlebell with that awesome, and they look awesome, we all have to agree that they look awesome with the gorilla face on it, it's maybe a motivational factor. But at the same time, yes, one of the downsides of the primal bells is the design can be annoying when doing cleans, especially if the face lands on your forearms, boom, instead of the back. Even the logo of on it and two poots behind the face can be irritating. It was irritating for me for, uh, at first when I first trained with it before, but over time it didn't really bother me as much as I can still hold the bell well on my forearms. So that's another aspect. Maybe the protruding face at the beginning hurts or is, not, uh, is irritating and then maybe it subsides. A second problem about this is really terrible shipping and delivery. And that's another thing. We have to think about delivery and shipping. You buy one and then actually how, how will it get to you and how long will it take? Um, he says, I don't know what shipping delivery is like for everyone involving FedEx as their cheapest option, but the first time I placed an order, they kept delaying it for some odd reason, and then I found out that they actually lost my bell doing the shipping. Wow, that's crazy. So not only losing the cargo, that you not only use the bell itself, but you have to wait longer. Luckily, and that's, that's good on, on it, calling on it, they replaced another one for me, and thank God it actually arrived. But before that, it still delayed my order two times with shipping exceptions. So you see... We don't know how long he actually had to wait, but it looks like a long time. A third thing is these are hell of overpriced, really. Overall, I think these spells are pretty worth it, so it wouldn't hurt to add one of them for the badass aesthetic art of the equipment that can motivate someone to train harder when working out when using them. But the main downsides, I believe, that makes these not worth to get are the risk of really shitty shipping involving FedEx as the option and too overpriced. So you see... Um, that that's one thing i want to get one of these on a kettlebells because they look so cool and maybe i have to train with it for for a little bit and maybe it it, it won't be as irritating as as it probably is but we have or it, or as i made it out to be but we have another feedback from somebody who said he had to stop using it because it's so irritating uh, at the clean that he stopped using the kettlebell but he uses it as a piece of art which i'm going to do now, another thing that we talked about, which is for beginners. If you're just starting out and you love the kettlebell and you love and it's a workout journey that you want to start, it's awesome. There's one aspect that I want to share with you that doesn't have anything to do with kettlebells yet with working out or with burning calories that is very important. And this comment highlights it. He says, great video. I'm 62 years old. And just to reiterate it, we have a lot of folks who are 60 plus who have subscribed to our channel, which is awesome. It goes to show how powerful the kettlebell is and, and how age doesn't matter when it comes to training. And I have severe lumbar stenosis and spinal osteoarthritis. This has changed the way I view exercise. I still walk 10,000 to 15,000 plus steps every day. Having a dog helps. That's awesome. I have done martial arts since my teens, but I've had to stop doing jiu-jitsu based systems because of the throwing and heavy contact. However, I still do karate twice a week plus my own training. I supplement this with mobility, body weight, dumbbell, and recently kettlebell training. 
This has all helped with keeping me fit, healthy, and mobile. It has also reduced the pain in my back. Awesome. For me, the secret is not, here it comes, is not to train the failure and wreck my body. We call it the, um, hey, now nah, it, just, it just left me. Uh, the minimum effective dose, M-E-D. You don't have to go balls to the walls and all out every time, every day, every workout of the week. It's good if you just new, use a minimum effective dose that your body starts adapting. Killing yourself is not worth it and maybe will produce some toxins in your body because working intensively will produce toxins, that's normal, but if you overdo it, these toxins, this, to this toxic waste can be harmful. I do shorter workouts which allow me to recover so that I can exercise the next day. Awesome! That's one of the powerful tools, one of the powerful aspects of shorter workouts. Occasionally I have pain, that means I can only walk a short distance for that day. That's fine. There's always the next day. Day. Like you said in your video, it is about training smarter. Thank you for sharing. Awesome. And I want to take this one, and I think then we're probably done for today. And see if we got uh, we got uh, still uh, 21 people in the chat. Maybe got a few comments, and then we're going to end this one. Uh, he says, hello, I like the simplicity of this time-based approach. But I have one question. Is it quite likely that if I'm not counting, I will do more reps with my stronger side during giving time, period? Since my right side is significantly stronger than my left side, I'm afraid that doing more reps with my right side will make this imbalance even bigger. Do you think it might be a problem? Or is this difference of a few reps is not going to be an issue? It's a good question. I'm not as knowledgeable to say that it won't be an issue. Hey, just doing a few more reps uh, won't be an issue because you work ac accumulative. So let's say you, s you do four reps. Every time you do a clean or a press, you do four reps with your stronger side more and you do, I don't know, um, let's say three workouts per week that equals 90 workouts a month. So you do 160 reps. Oh, I, I can't even count. Right? What is it? Uh, that's 360 reps more on your left, uh, on your stronger side. There's probably imbalances. Maybe. So how can you combat this? Maybe you can choose the so-called power breathing. So the power breathing method, it, it, it is actually a method for breathing, but I also use it for pacing. So it would be more adequate to say you use a the right pacing. What it means is you keep breathing. So for example, you do a clean and press. So it's clean, it's backswing, one breath, then up into the acceleration pull, second breath, then the third breath is when you wreck the kettlebell. Now what you do is you keep breathing. Maybe two breaths or three breaths, and boom, you go up, going down, and they're going back into the backswing. And then once you land in the rack rest position, you do three breaths as well. And you do the same thing with your right side. This pacing method will allow you to do the same amount of reps with both sides, probably. Now, what you also, what also maybe will work is just being aware of the fact that you have a stronger side and that you don't want to cause imbalances and that you want your weaker side to catch up. So that means you start cleaning or jerking or whatever with your stronger side and then you are aware, you use those mechanisms because you are aware of it to maybe slow down the pace, go a little bit slower, do less reps and then work your way up with your weaker side. So maybe just being aware of it will help you. So guys, I think that's it for today. Uh, we have more comments. But hey, I've been streaming for one and a half hours because you guys are so lit. The chat, the, the chat is so lit. So, um, Angel smiling, is laughing because I'm having a good time, baby. I love you. Alexis saying it's better to train 70% and being able to do it every day than going 100% and killing yourself to exhaustion and failure. That's what's up, Alexia. And I recently heard this uh, as a final closing argument or final closing statement. I recently heard this on a Joe Rogan podcast. This no pain, no gain, this one more rep, this going to failure, this going balls to the walls mentality can be a problem. 
And it's maybe a problem that certain sports or certain athletes or certain philosophies and methodologies have accumulated or have uh, really contributed to. So people nowadays maybe believe because they maybe look at these workout or motivation videos where you see, for example, you take a look at what David Goggins is doing. He's so, such a crazy dude who does crazy stuff, crazy stuff, and then he, he's trying to motivate you, which I think he's doing good stuff, but sometimes maybe it sounds like, hey, if I'm not able to do four Ironmans in one day, then I'm, you know, I'm not motivated, I'm stupid, or I'm not talented, or I don't do enough, right? So this doesn't take away from the fact that some people need that kind of motivation. What it maybe sometimes perpetuates is this feeling of if I don't go hard and if I don't kill myself, if I don't feel that my body is yelling at me the next day or I get rhabdo. I can't quite remember the word. There's a word for it. If you go too hard and CrossFitters even pride themselves um, with with that title that they got wrapped in losses. I can't, can't uh, remember the word right now. But it's actually a problem where I think, I'm paraphrasing, where blood leaks outside of the muscle and then this could cause toxic, uh, I'm, it's not blood, it's something leaks out of the muscle and then something happens and this can cause a hell of a problem. So there's even a chance or there's even a injury, not only injuring yourself in a specific movement, for example, injuring your shoulder, injuring your hip, injuring your arm or whatever. You can even injure your muscles or damage your muscles to a degree where they won't function properly and then you will have to maybe go to the hospital or just really regenerate because you didn't give your body enough time to recuperate and that's that thinking and i have switched my thinking from this balls to the walls training mentality to yes going hard having fun and getting to know your body and that's maybe one of the reasons why it's maybe necessary or maybe a valuable option for you to talk to a good coach who can coach you so you get to so you're able to get to know your body so you understand your body well enough where you understand okay now I maybe have to dial it down a little bit even though I feel I could do more but I'm anticipating the next workout I'm anticipating that I've been working out for 5 days in a row and I'm not as young anymore or maybe I have an underlying condition where I have that I have to take care of so I have to work out more smarter so all these factors come into play and that maybe tells you okay now I have to dial it down a little bit and don't get confused using the minimum effective dose doesn't mean that it won't challenge you or, the, or that it won't push you it will push you the kettlebell especially kettlebell training can be really challenging and really tough if you haven't if it's the first time you're doing it but don't let that confuse you and you can always find the sweet spot. The sweet spot is you will feel if you've overdone it and your body needs two to three to four days of rest and you feel tired and you have, you're feeling more sleepy. Your body tells you, hey, you've overdone it. But there's a sweet spot where you feel, oh, my body worked. Oh, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling strong. I'm feel, I feel that my body had to do something, yet I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling invigorated. I can't wait for the next workout. My mind is still there. I'm not broken. I don't feel, I'm, I'm still motivated. And even if I'm not motivated, I still that I, I, I'm able to get my habits going. So I'm, go, I'm gonna do this workout. And once I start working out, I'm feeling better, all that kind of stuff. So that's that sweet spot that you wanna go for. And it's probably for everybody, it's, it's on a different level. And that's where we differ. And that's the awesome thing about being a human being. So, guys, thank you so much for joining. Uh, Dean saying, I sometimes find my weaker side produces a slightly cleaner clean than the right side. Interesting. Oh, there's one aspect that I just want to jump in, Dean. Uh, one insight that I want to share with you. That's one comment. 
Somebody said, it's an Instagram comment. He said, I was talking about progression, weight progression. When can you progress with the weight? We always say, for example, just uh, you do, you're used to doing a swing. So you got 16 kilo kettlebell. Now you're wondering, wait, when can I progress to a, to a 20 kilo uh, and be safe with it? We always follow the rule. If you're able to do five minutes of swings continuously and you, and, and you don't feel your lower back, it doesn't hurt. It feels good. It's maybe challenging, but it feels good. And, it, and you're able to do five minutes, upgrade to the next and to the next four kilo range, right? So then uh, somebody said, and this is something that we also mentioned as well in another video. And he said, sometimes, yes, that's, that's, that's good. But what I found out is sometimes using a heavier weight will force my body, myself, to do a better technique or it will force it will put certain barriers in that will force me to use my legs more maybe it will force me to improve my technique because otherwise i won't be able to lift that weight properly and i said that's very great insight that's actually what we tell clients that's actually what we do sometimes with our clients and challenging them for a heavier weight so they feel for example if you're used to doing a snatch with the eight kilo always using your arms use a 12 kilo and all of a sudden you realize, whoo, I can't use my arms. I have to use my legs way more. So that's more of an advanced technique. If you're safe with your lifts, if you're safe with working out, if you're, if you're safe with the kettlebell, then you can try this technique. Otherwise, I would only advise to do this technique when a coach is standing nearby you. So guys, thank you so much for joining. I, I, I love that stuff. I love that stuff. Coconut saying awesome info. Thank you, G. You're welcome, brother. Dean spot on, Alexia. Short, regular doses. That's what's up, guys. So, hey, you know what's up tomorrow. You know what's up tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be another one. Live workout. We're looking forward to joining you guys. Now that uh, the lockdowns seem to increase worldwide, we want to gather here on this YouTube channel to work out, to have some fun, to have some fellowship and some community. I, I love this. You should see, guys, this fellowship and community that happens before the workout starts. You have Alexia, you have Longto, you have Dean, you have all those old school folks who have been with us from a very early age and now are, are having discussions before the workout even starts in the live chat. So they're talking about stuff. They're talking about the words workout. They're talking about what's going on right now. And that's awesome. And that's organically. Guys, we don't force this. We don't force anything. I've never forced anything, even in my career as a personal coach. It's all organically. It's, I believe, in the rule or in the law of reciprocity. If we give you something that you believe is a value, maybe you give something back. And even if you don't, that's fine as well. It's all about giving. Because the secret of living is giving. We'll catch you tomorrow, guys. Live workout. You got to tune in. Kettlebell Club, you got to be there. We're looking forward to have you on tomorrow. And thank you so much for joining. I hope this podcast was able to serve you some value. We still got 18 people in the chat. And uh, yeah, Alexa saying tomorrow. Alexa, uh, Jose was asking about the exercises uh, to be announced. <laughs> We're thinking about the exercises tomorrow, guys. They will be online. Mike 77, 77, 77 saying, see you tomorrow then. Angie, baby, I love you. You have to find the right people in the right place to do something. That's what's up. And we end this on this final note. Catch you on the next one. Don't forget, like and subscribe and catch you tomorrow on a live workout. Peace. Ow. Enjoy your kettlebell content and more live workouts. If you want to financially support our YouTube channel, you can join the Kettlebell Club. There's a join button right below this video. It'll cost you only $5.95 and you will be mentioned in our live streams. And you will get a small LS logo right next to your name whenever you comment something. So that way people will know that you belong to the tribe. If you want to take it a step even further and you want to work out from home with Without any ad breaks, you can check out our 30 days of kettlebells workout course. I'm clicking on my 30 days of kettlebells course. On your left hand corner, 
you have all the chapters and the lessons. All these workouts are divided into chapters and into lessons. Right here it says, welcome to 30 days of kettlebells. We have some important information, blah, blah. So then when you're ready, you can click on continue and boom, you're switching into your first workout and it already starts. So here you got your first workout. As you can see, when we scroll down, you can see here is the description for the workout. No ads, no ad break, okay? It's just the workout and you. You see the exercises, you see what you have to do. 30 Days of Kettlebells is an intense workout program that builds you up as a beginner without prior knowledge. That's what we specialize in. From now on, you will receive one of the following tasks each day for the next 30 days. You have a workout. So if a car pops up that says workout, here you will be tasked to work out. Simple. If a car pops up that says rest on your day two you saw previously, we believe that regeneration is also as important as working out. On these days, you can rest. Then we move on, you have cards that pop up that say rest and study. Here you can rest and you can study a specific topic that we'll cover in this lesson. And finally, you have some cards that pop up that say rest or workout. What that means is you can either work out if you feel like it or you can take a break. It's only $49.99 so if you want to support us, if you want to support the channel, if you want to support our kettlebell courses and if you want to enjoy something ad free and learn something new and get a deeper understanding of the kettlebell and get a deep connection to us, then feel free to buy this course and have fun.